All right, so Kittle Beck here from startingstrongman.com, and I'm going to assemble my brand new yoke from Strength Shop USA, strengthshopusa.com. It's their riot yoke. It comes with these instructions, but pretty straightforward. What you're gonna need is have some big ass bolts, and ends up, I was able to use a one and seven sixteen socket. You're probably not gonna want have one of those. So you're gonna need a big old crescent wrench, a 15 16 socket wrench or adjustable wrench, and a three quarter, which I don't know where I put that. But anyways, I have the two feet laying right here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the big bolts out. Washer. See how it has this end cap that's going to go on the top so water doesn't get in it or whatever because i am going to store mine outside put it in here bolts through that on each end press out of it, you can do log press out of it with the pit, with the loading arms. Um, you can load over it, you can do zerker carries, you can do squats. It's like bubble gum shrimp, but for strongman, that's what yoke is. There's not a single piece of equipment in this sport that you can do more with. And on top of that, the yoke, is I believe one of the more technical events that if you do have it in a contest, you kind of have to train with one. So there's some, you know, if you pick up my book, How to Train Strongman in a Regular Gym, where you don't have access 
to the specific equipment and you're trying to get strong to do contests. I have a lot of substitutions. The yoke, you really have to use a yoke. There's a couple implements like that. And I'd say the next piece of equipment I would buy is a log. And then I would buy sandbags or a stone of steel. I think stone of steel is expensive, but it's you know, if you have limited space and you have a garage gym, you can do all of your stone training on it versus making a bunch of concrete stones. And once you have a full set, especially if you have training partners and such, it actually ends up being a bit cheaper uh, overall versus the full range of stones if you get a uh, stone of steel from a MD Power Center. So I always try to make sure that all the nuts and stuff are going the same way. <clears throat> you know, I don't want this one on this side going this way, this one going that way. All that crap. And everything else looks like it's winding up. Right. More of the bigger washers. The washers, I feel like one side's like smoother and the other side's like like kind of rounded, we want the smooth side going in. So, if you follow my channel and you're gonna watch some of my training, what's funny about this yoke is I doubt I'll actually do very many yoke walks. Uh, I put in a video a long time ago, not a long time ago, about the three strong man events you shouldn't do. And what I mean by that is, you just don't really have to, it's a risk versus reward, right? If you want to do anything risky, feel free. But, you know, I think that there's some events that have, you know, they're just, uh, they have a little bit or, <clears throat> there's substitutions you can use to get the same kind of training benefit. Um, and the yoke, I just don't think has that much of a training benefit, at least going heavy on it. I think you can go a little lighter. Uh, but it's, like I said, uh, people don't really think about it, but the yoke is a great tool to train uh, for a lot of stuff other than yoke walks. You have these four posts on each corner. You should be these long bolts right here. So they don't just allow. Yeah, I'm not gonna lose a single one of those. Looks like it comes with a couple extra couple extra uh, washers and stuff, hopefully. It's always nice when you do that when you're assembling things. All these bolts in for the feet. This is where you put the plates. Uh, the Strength Shop yoke doesn't have side plates like some of the others, like Rogue, but I think that's fine. I prefer loading it at all four corners anyways. Uh, the only downside to that is if you're doing yoke over bar, you don't really want to hit any plates with a stone, especially for a contest. But in my opinion, if you're hosting a contest, you really should have a, I think you should really have a set um, set up not just like a, a rogue yoke or strength shop yoke or something that you're doing over the bar. You should really invest in um, like a specific crossbar that's wider. Have one made. You know, host a contest. Don't be so cheap. Make it up in the entries. I ran contests. They're profitable enough to buy new equipment. Not much profitable. Um, you know, it depends on if you have a menu or not. But you'll be able to use it. You know, especially if you plan on running a lot of contests. Just get everything put together, and then I'll go through and uh, tighten it all up. But you're gonna need, you know, some bigger uh, wrenches or sockets for this. It's a uh, good one, one and seven sixteenths seems to be just about right. Um, and then these on the side are five sixteenths and then three quarters. Of the Back. 
This is when you wish you had friends. But like I said earlier, one of the main benefits uh, for me and if you have a garage gym like me, or you can tell it's a garage, you know, I got normal stuff everywhere. Uh, it's not immaculate. Um, you know, I got lawn mowers in here and weed blowers and a muscle car, like you do. Uh, I just, you know, you, you want to try to conserve as much space as possible. It's nice to keep it you know, something portable. Uh, I don't. I never really bolted one of my racks down. My racks down. I got away with it, even though it's a little more dangerous, I guess, to do so. But I like that with a yoke, you can basically just pick it up and move it anywhere you want to. You want to press or squat from, and you know I live in beautiful, sunny Central California, right outside Monterey. So I, you know, it's nice. It's like nice and 70 degrees right now. So I plan on doing lots of my squats outside. You know, this thing it might rust a little bit, but you'll be able to see how it holds up sitting outside. I mean, my 50 year old Suburban sits outside. You know, in this cage back here, you know, they, they take up more room. Um, one downside to a yoke is if you're tall, like an actual strong man who's over six foot tall, I think the crossbar isn't like, quite tall enough to squat out of. But I have a training partner, friend, whatever you want to call it, coming over this weekend uh, to train with me. Uh, and he is quite tall, you know six foot something so we'll see if he's able to use it in the same way I am being a short five foot seven so those are all finger tight I'm gonna move this over bunch of Hitch pins in here, which I thought they were bolts. I'm pleasantly supply, surprised that they are nice quality hitch pins to go through the yoke. Four of them, so that every corner it'll, uh, it'll be nice and stable. There's one, two, and they even have these little adjusters on the side that you can screw it in, make it even tighter. So that should work out pretty well. I'm gonna grab this, put one in my pocket. And uh, this is a, you know, it's not the tallest yoke in the world. So I can actually put it on and off myself. But again, the de and then it also fits in and out of my garage without tipping it on its side, which is good. I'm gonna put all of these in my pocket. Yeah, let's see, let's get this about right. So I need this a lot over. But the downside to that is uh, taller people might have a little trouble uh, pressing or squatting with this uh, to use it in that way if you're probably over 6'1 or so. But I train by myself, it's for me, so I figure it worked fine. It's a very rare time that I have multiple people training with me. Now is when you wish you had friends. Another way to do this, which you might do, tip both on the side. Like this. And then, I'm gonna do it the other way. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. We're gonna tip it down. Here. Hope that doesn't fall on me. Do you own a gym? Have your interns do this. So I know every strongman gym is so successful that they can have interns. So, still watching? Why? I'm going to be ridiculous right now. Wobble too much. Try to line up a hole. breaking things. So, as you can see, so even for me, I'm probably going to have to move this up higher to squat or press out of in here. Um, 
but we'll test that out in a future video. I'm getting ahead of myself. Comes with J hooks, which is easy to adjust. And because they're drilled on the other side, because there's holes on this side too. What's cool about that is I can put like a, uh, I can put them like this and other attachments or I want to set up like a Viking press. There's these little guys which go on the outside here to tighten everything up even more. That's nice. I probably won't use those very much. Um, I think they might get in the way with some benchers, especially benching. Not so much squatting. Just sticking out too far, you know? But right here, the height I have it is about the pause you can have with it still putting pressure on uh, with still tightening up the upper part. Um, something I recommend to do is get a wire and put it around, even like some zip ties, and put it around this to this. You don't lose these damn clips, because you will lose those damn clips. These aren't the beefiest clips. Um, these hitch pins are beefy though. It definitely looked like they were bolt nut, bolts and nuts on the store on the shop, which I'm very happy that they're not. They probably move a little bit. It'd be nicer if they tire tolerance, but we'll see how it works. J-Cups. Let's see. We need a squat out of it. That's put this even taller. J-Cup. It's a little uneven right now. I'll have to mess with that. And we have spotting arms. This is, they call these spotting arms, they're, you know, so you don't die. But what I'm really going to use them for is log presses. I had a good so I log out of them. Hopefully they're long enough. Pretty decent coat on it. You know, I'm super careful. I kind of some of it here, but that's me. Now I just gotta tighten everything up. Don't forget to tighten everything up. 